you guys. Thanks for tuning in to part four of Escaping the Loop. Wrapping things up in this one, putting in some final touches and solidifying ideas that we have. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Cool, so here we are inside Ableton Live. And as I explained in the earlier videos, I'm not touching these in between sessions. So this is exactly what we left off with in the last video. If you haven't seen the other ones, go and watch those ones first. I'll play you through what we've got and then we'll think about an intro and maybe some final adjustments for what we'll do for the first 16. Cool, so the third 16 um, could still use some work, I think, so we might have a little look at that as well. Um, but in terms of an intro, we're gonna do a very short, you know, 32 bar intro. I'm just gonna use the sounds we've got if we can. So this pad that happens in the very beginning anyway, um, again, is part of a longer, longer one. So we'll use that. I'm just going to duplicate those over and then I'm going to take uh, actually a second 16 because it's got the percussive effects hits in it okay didn't work Come on. Do it that way. Okay, so I'm not going to want my uh, kick and snare in there probably. Not for this part anyway, so I'll get rid of that. Uh, it's far too much percussion to be happening in an intro, so I'll get rid of a load of that. And we'll just listen to how the sounds sit at the moment. Not going to want the sub in it. Uh, and we're going to have to change some levels and maybe add some reverbs and things as we go, but we'll see what we've got. So they're not actually on the right channel. So let's bin this. I think that progresses quite nicely actually. So get rid of that bit. Gonna move just the bottom section over to B before the drop. 
I'm going to duplicate the distorted bass channel and just put a high pass and an extra reverb on there. It's a really simple technique, but it's really effective. So I'll use a uh, Rift filter for this. As a high pass. Maybe turn that pad down a little bit. I think we need to have that section, that second part in there. It gives a little bit too much away. Maybe have them the same for both. And each sound that I want to put reverb on. I am just creating a new channel for it. I don't really like having lots of automation going on because if you copy and paste stuff, sometimes it goes a bit funny and it takes a, takes ages to try and sort it out. as well. Get rid of those. in there as well just copy those across and then slip for a different sound in there channel like some drums in there as well so maybe just take the kick and the snare uh, I'm gonna resample a bit of the drums so it's easier to work with them
going to use a uh, use biome by unfilled studio just to see if I can get something interesting out of some of the modulation presets that it has. Definitely a bit much. I'm just going to record uh, the automation and then amend whatever I have at the end. So not really that happy with that movement actually, so try something different. fade on there as well. sounds already what's there actually. Maybe we could even stop, possibly stop the drums altogether. extra impact on the one there. I'm not really too worried about the processing at this point. So flip that back around the other way. wrong sound. Yeah. 
That's the one I want. beginning and there as well if it doesn't sound like we're overusing it okay let's give that a listen stop there because I've got some extra ideas. We'll move these into the beginning as well. Start from there. So that will do as a basic intro for now as well. Now let's go back to the third 16 quickly. And um, there's a few ideas that I make sure that I want to solidify um, a bit more than how they are. And that will help with the progression of the whole track. One of the things I've noticed is every bass riff goes down uh, or is descending apart from the very last one. So just without really changing anything what we could do is swap these two 16s around and that will make the difference seem more apparent or it, it should do so let's give that a go this is where hopefully none of my automation goes wrong okay so let's listen to the progression in that now so we'll start from the second 16 <laughs> So maybe swap those around.
change those two notes so they're rising. Rising instead. Cool. There's one other bit which really sticks out to me, which is here. That bit. It's just a little bit too empty. So for the time being, and for the purposes of the video, we'll just find another effect sound to go in there and just fill that gap up a little bit. That actually works quite well because it leads into that break uh, that happens there and makes it sound like it isn't missing something. It's intentionally quieter. some of the percussion from here possibly. Okay, so I think that's it for the series and hopefully that really helps you see how you can develop a 16 bar or an eight bar idea into something that's, you know, half of a full arrangement really, or at least a first solid main section. In terms of the second drop, it's much of the same. Um, there's no point in going through that because all the techniques that I use are gonna be the same. It's just the variations that I come up with uh, will be different. So we'll listen to it uh, one more time. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you again soon.